Batman Returns. Written by Justine Corman and Ron Fontes. Based on a screenplay by Daniel Waters and Wesley Strick. Christmas should be a time of joy, but one Christmas, long ago, in Gotham City, there were two parents who were far from joyful. They had a most unusual baby boy. Instead of chubby fingers and a sweet smile, he had webbed flippers tipped with claws, a snapping beak, and an evil disposition. Unable to live with their wicked bird baby, the desperate parents took him to a deserted bridge in Gotham City Park. There, they dumped the little creature, carriage and all, into a freezing stream. They expected that to be the end of the nightmare, but it was only the beginning. The carriage floated through the murky waters into the ruined Gotham Park Zoo, where it came to rest on an island of ice and snow in the Arctic World Pavilion. Four majestic emperor penguins found the carriage and raised the child as their own. Years passed, and it was Christmas again in Gotham City. In Gotham Plaza, crowds of holiday shoppers awaited the daily lighting of a giant Christmas tree. Gotham's lovely ice princess was ready to press the colorful button that would light the tree. One of the shoppers in the plaza was Alfred, the butler of millionaire Bruce Wayne, who is also Batman. Alfred had noticed a bold headline in the evening paper. Penguin, man or myth, or something worse. Recently, a rumor had been spreading about a mysterious penguin-like man living in the sewers. What nonsense. Meanwhile, in his plush office above the plaza, business tycoon Max Schreck was discussing with Gotham's mayor Shrek's plan to build a vast power plant, while Shrek's meek secretary, Selina Kyle, was serving coffee. You'll have to submit blueprints and reports through the usual channels. Um, I have a suggestion. I can't listen to that now, Selina. As Gotham's most prominent business leader, he was due to make a holiday speech in the plaza. The mayor, Shrek, and Shrek's son Chip hurried off to the tree lighting ceremony. Unfortunately, Shrek had left his notes behind, but before he could begin to improvise, a giant Christmas present rolled into the plaza. Great idea, Shrek. Not mine, Mr. Mayor. Suddenly, the huge box burst open. Three brightly painted motorcycles roared out. Then five thugs flipped and tumbled from the box, followed by clowns, a fire breather, jugglers, an organ grinder, and even a trained poodle. The gaudy gang leapt onto the stage and confronted the mayor's party. We came for Shrek! Dad, save yourself! As his son Chip came to his defense, Max Shrek jumped from the platform and fled into the crowd. On security duty at the scene, Police Commissioner Gordon used his radio to call headquarters. Flash the scene. In seconds, the shape of a giant bat shone in the night sky, summoning Gotham's hero, Batman. Meanwhile, Selina Kyle had rushed to Gotham Plaza with Shrek's forgotten notes. There, she found a three-riot as the strange circus trope terrorized the crowd of shoppers. Just then, the Batmobile roared into the plaza. With a dazzling display of clever devices, Batman began to fight the evil trope, 
a clown grabbed Selina and threatened her with a stun gun. As Batman tackled the brutal buffoon, he noticed a red triangle tattooed over the clown's left eye. Then he noticed Selina. She and the Dark Knight locked eyes, instantly captivated by each other. With effort, Batman broke his gaze and raced away as the crowd cheered him. Huddled on a side street, Max Schreck also heard the cheering. Now he was safe, or so he thought, because all of a sudden he was pulled down a manhole. Max Schreck awoke in a cold, dark place. He was surrounded by ice, penguins, and the trope of odd performers. The Red Triangle Circus Gang. His bleary eyes tried to see through the gloom. There, under a grimy umbrella, was the most hideous creature Shrek had ever seen. You must be the penguin. Uh, please, don't hurt me. Quiet. Odd as it may seem, we have something in common. You see, we're both monsters. But you're a well-respected monster, and I am not. Help me return to Gotham. I'm just a businessman. I know about the toxic waste from your clean factory. I also have documents proving you owe half the slums in Gotham City. Help me, or I'll tell the public. Well, Mr. Penguin, sir, uh, perhaps I could uh, arrange a little welcome home for you. You won't regret this, Mr. Shrek. The next night, in Wayne Manor, Bruce Wayne heard some startling news on TV. The city will never forget this morning's miracle. Gotham's mystery man, the Penguin, showed himself today. He emerged from the sewers just in time to rescue the mayor's baby from a kidnapping attempt. All I want in return is to find my folks and to try to understand the terrible wrong they did to a child on Christmas long ago. Max Schreck used his influence to give the Penguin access to the Gotham Hall of Records. The Birdman roosted there day and night, going through the city's birth records and making a long list of names. Meanwhile, Batman drove through Gotham's dark streets. Alfred spoke to him over the Batmobile's video telephone system. The city has been strangely quiet since the attempt at baby mapping. Yet, you still patrol the city. What about eating and sleeping? Are you concerned about that strange, heroic penguin person? Funny you should ask, Alfred. Batman wasn't the only one thinking about the Penguin. All of Gotham buzzed with the Birdman's sad story. Reporters and a crowd of onlookers witnessed the tragic moment when the Penguin finally found his family in Gotham Cemetery. Playing to his audience, the Penguin forgave his parents' evil deed. Uh, Mr. Penguin! A Penguin is a bird that cannot fly. I am a man. I have a name. My name is Oswald Cobblepot. Meanwhile, inside the Batcave, Bruce Wayne puts a disc into a CD player. Mr. Wayne, does the phrase Christmas vacation mean anything to you? <laughs> Listen to yourself hassling me yesterday in the car. What about eating and sleeping? Bruce Wayne clicked off the CD and returned to work. He was searching his microfiles for data on the Shady Red Triangle Circus. Finally, he found an old newspaper article about an aquatic bird boy in the circus freak show. The Red Triangle Circus had folded following reports of missing children. After that, 
the bird boy disappeared, Bruce Wayne realized the bird boy was none other than the penguin. Late that same night, Selena Kyle returned home to her lonely apartment. The tired secretary took comfort from her only friend, her cat, Miss Kitty. Then Selena remembered she needed to prepare for the next day's meeting that Shrek had arranged to discuss the power plant with Bruce Wayne. Shrek wanted the millionaire to put up some of his money. Wearily, Selena went back to Shrek's office. Several hours later, Shrek found her busily making notes from his private files. Selena innocently told him something she had discovered. The power plant would not generate power. It would absorb power. Of course, Max Shrek already knew that. He was furious that Selena had discovered his secret. Do you know what curiosity did to the cat? And in a fit of rage, he pushed Selena out the window. Luckily, Selena's fall was broken by a deep snowdrift. She lay half conscious on the cold white mound, faintly calling the name of her feline friend, Miss Kitty. Soon, cats of every kind and color came to Selena's rescue. After a while, she managed to pick herself up, but the woman who rose from the frozen drift was a new Selena. No longer a meek, mousy secretary, Selena Kyle has become Catwoman. The next morning, Bruce Wayne met with Max Shrek. I commissioned this report. I thought you might want to take a look at it. Point is, Max, Gotham City has a power surplus. I'm sure you know that. My question is, what's your angle? A power surplus? What do you mean? One can never have too much power. Yeah, well, I'm gonna fight you on this. I've already spoken to the mayor, and we see eye to eye, so... Mayors come and go, and their airs tire easily. Really think a flyweight like you could last 15 rounds with Muhammad Shrek? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. Of course, I don't have a crime boss like Cobblepot in my corner, so it might... Crime boss? Why? If his parents had an 86 him, you two might have been roomies at prep school. Oswald controls the Red Triangle Gang. I can't prove it yet. I won't stand for mudslinging. If my assistant were here, she'd show you the door. To Shrek's amazement, Selena walked in. Shrek should have remembered another thing about curious cats. They have nine lives. That night, as Catwoman prowled Gotham's back alleys, she heard a woman shrieking. Help, Batman! The woman had been cornered by a mugger. Catwoman pounced on the thug. With a few expert kicks and scratches, she sent him running. Thank you, thank you. I was so scared. You make it so easy. Always waiting for some Batman to save you. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Records, the Penguin worked on the list of names he had been compiling. Shrek came to see him there. How would you like to be mayor? Shrek thought if the Penguin were mayor, he'd be able to build his power plant. Mayor? But aren't elections held in November? You're right. But elected officials can be recalled. Think of it. Cobblepot for mayor. It's the destiny your parents discarded. Sounds perfect. Shrek explained his plan. The first step was a city-wide crime wave to make the present mayor look weak. The Penguin had just the clowns for the job. At the Penguin's command, the Red Triangle Circus Gang went on a rampage through Gotham City. They blew up bank machines, broke down shop doors, Catwoman joined the felonous fun, prowling around 
in the elegant Shrek's department store and leaving a wake of destruction. The shopping district was in chaos by the time Batman arrived. The Dark Knight programmed his super batarang. With a single toss, the amazing weapon knocked down the whole gang. Only the trained poodle was left standing. The dog caught the batarang in its teeth and ran off with the weapon. As Batman searched for his lost batarang, he came upon the penguin standing in front of Shrek's department store. Admiring your handiwork, penguin. I am touring the riot scene, Batman, gravely assessing the devastation, upstanding mayor stuff. You're not the mayor. Things change. Just then, Catwoman somersaulted out of the department store. Seconds later, the store burst into flames. And with a blast that knocked both Batman and the Penguin to the ground, the Penguin seized his chance to escape. He spun his helicopter umbrella and flew up into the air. Meanwhile, Batman chased Catwoman up the fire escape of a nearby building. When they got to the roof, Catwoman wrapped her whip around Batman. They struggled together until Catwoman slipped over the edge and plunged down, landing in a dump truck full of sand. Saved by kitty litter. The graceful cat had now used up two lives, but she still had seven to go. At noon the next day, the Penguin addressed a cheering crowd. He righteously accused the mayor of incompetence. After the speech, the Penguin went to his grimy campaign headquarters, where Catwoman was waiting for him. She wanted to help him destroy Batman. The Penguin cackled. We're going to turn his spiffy Batmobile into an H-bomb on wheels. Yesterday's victor is tomorrow's vapor. What? To really destroy Batman, we must first make Gotham think he's become evil. You mean frame him? What an intriguing idea. Later that day, Bruce Wayne met with Selina Kyle in Gotham Plaza. He invited her to watch the lighting of the tree with him on the television at Wayne Manor. Soon, they were sitting together on the couch, absorbed in conversation. They barely noticed the television until a news bulletin erupted the show. The Ice Princess has been kidnapped. The police report that a blood-stained batarang was found in her dressing room near Gotham Plaza. It looks like Batman has turned into a criminal. Bruce hastily excused himself. Once he was out of the room, Selina rushed out too. Batman jumped into the Batmobile and raced to Gotham Plaza. He left the car in the alley and dashed away to find the Ice Princess. The Red Triangle Gang crept out of the shadows. This was their chance. The crafty crooks fitted the Batmobile with a remote-controlled beacon rod. They ignored the police sirens howling through Gotham Plaza. After searching the area, Batman found the Ice Princess tied up in a deserted building. He immediately began to untie the ropes around her hands. This was set up to look like I did it. Just then, Catwoman dropped down from the ceiling where she had been hiding. She grabbed the squealing princess and dragged her up the stairs. Batman chased them to the roof. The penguin was waiting. The penguin tossed a trick umbrella at the princess. The umbrella opened, and a swarm of baby bats flew at her. Don't panic. Batman reached out to save the princess, but it was too late. The princess toppled from the roof. To the horrified crowd below, it looked as if Batman had pushed the princess to her doom. A hail of police bullets scattered across the roof and bounced off Batman's armor. Attempting to escape the bullets, 
Batman fell into Catwoman's clutches. She kissed him beneath a sprig of mistletoe that had hung above their heads. Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. A kiss can be deadlier, if you mean it. Then Catwoman savagely scratched at Batman's mask. Batman dove off the roof, unfurling great black glider wings, and swooped off into the night. The Penguin emerged and congratulated Catwoman on her victory. He then asked her to marry him. I wouldn't touch you. Not even to scratch you. The spurned Birdman sent her flying on his helicopter umbrella. Now, she'd used up three of her lives. Disappointed, the Penguin returned to his campaign bus. Inside were the controls to the beacon rod hooked up to the Batmobile. Batman's fight from the roof brought him to the Batmobile. But he was shocked to find that the powerful machine was under the Penguin's control. The speeding car roared through the traffic and over sidewalks. Frantic citizens leapt from its path. As Batman fought to control the car, the Penguin appeared on the video screen. Welcome to the Oswald Cobblepot School of Driving. Batman pressed a button to record the Penguin's voice. Relax and I'll take care of the wretched pinhead puppets of Gotham. Batman frantically tried to stop the Batmobile. He screeched to a halt in front of an old lady who stood only inches away. Inside the bus, the Penguin growled in frustration and anger. The Batmobile began moving again, speeding through the streets of Gotham, completely out of control. Batman punched a hole in the floorboards, found the beacon rod, and snapped it in half. The car, once again, was under Batman's command. The Penguin angrily pounded his control panel. I came this close to a perfect evening. I iced the princess. I almost got married. And I almost blew away Batman. Pursued by the police and the penguin's goons, Batman sped down an alley. Buildings at the far end of the alley formed a passage too narrow to get through. Thinking fast, Batman connected two sparking wires, causing the Batmobile's sleek sides to pop off. The Batmobile then darted easily through the space between the buildings, leaving Batman's stunned pursuers behind. The next day, the Penguin made a speech in Gotham Plaza, but the words that came out of the speakers were not what he intended. Jamming the Penguin's broadcast, Bruce Wayne played the words he had recorded in the Batmobile during his wild ride. Relax and I'll take care of the wretched pinhead puppets of Gotham. The citizens of Gotham were outraged. A crowd of listeners chased the Birdman into Gotham City Park. The Penguin dove off the same bridge his parents had thrown him over years before and sought refuge in his chilly arctic lair. A fat clown greeted him. Great speech, Oswald. I am my name's not Oswald. It's Penguin. Where's my list? Bring me the names. Gotham will never forget. Now was the moment for his revenge. Later that night, Bruce Wayne attended Shrek's Holiday Max Gareta Ball at Shrek's department store. The elegant premises had been cleaned up after the fire and were filled with guests in fantastic costumes. Bruce, however, wore only an elegant tuxedo. From across the room, he saw Selena. She wasn't wearing a costume either. Like Bruce, she was tired of wearing masks. Bruce led Selena to the dance floor. They stood beneath the mistletoe. I'd hoped you'd be here. A kiss under the mistletoe. Mistletoe can be deadly, 
if you need it. And a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. Huh? You're... you're her. You're him. Just then, an explosion ripped open the floor. The penguin and his penguin army emerged from the hole to confront the horrified partygoers. Right now, my troops are scouring the city, gathering Gotham's firstborn sons. I'll take this one now. The penguin reaches for Chip, Max Shrek's son. Not Chip, please. I'm the one you want. I'm the one who set you up to be mayor. You have a point. The penguin grabbed Shrek and vanished with his victim. Bruce, we have to do something. However, as Selina turned to face Bruce, she realized he had already slipped away. The Red Triangle Circus Gang wound its way in a train of old circus wagons through the dark, empty streets of Gotham City. The Penguin's heartless henchmen were collecting children from their cozy beds. The Penguin's list had held the names of the firstborn sons in Gotham. His plan was to destroy them all. Suddenly, a shadow fell across the train's flaked paint. It was Batman once again. The Penguin's plans were derailed by Batman. Shrek shivered in a cage in the penguin's icy lair. The birdman pranced before the tycoon, twirling a musical umbrella. A whole generation of Gotham's finest will follow me into a pool of your own industrial waste. Then you will join them. Before the penguin could say any more, the organ grinder's monkey hopped in the room and handed him a note. What's this? Dear Penguin, the children regret that they are unable to attend. Have a disappointing day. Sincerely, Batman. Ah! Thanks to Batman, the time has come to punish all of Gotham, not just its firstborn sons. The Penguin summoned his army of radio-controlled penguins who were outfitted with bazooka backpacks. Forward march! As the Penguin's army waddled through the sewer pipes, the swift Batski boat hurtled through those same dark waters. Batman whispered in his high-tech phone, Alfred, I'm homing in on the radio signal's origin. Ready when you are, sir. Already, the waddling horde of penguins had begun to surround Gotham Plaza. At the Penguin's electronic command, the birds would fire their bazookas. But instead of bombing, the birds simply stood at attention. On Batman's instructions, Alfred had jammed the penguin's signal just in time. Now, in Alfred's control, the penguin army turned and marched back toward Gotham City Park. The penguin watched his troops on a video screen and snarled. Who could have? Don't say it. I'm starting to lose my temper. The penguin grabbed an umbrella brutally shoving aside the fat clown, who teetered and fell. Then, the Birdman jumped onto his duck vehicle and steered it out of the room. The clown fell against Shrek's cage, close enough to Shrek to reach over the filch, his key ring, and gun. Shrek was about to escape when a cat nine tail whip coiled around his ankles and dragged him away. The penguin's duck reached the entrance of the old Arctic World Pavilion in Gotham Park Zoo, just as the Batsky boat shot out of a water pipe. The two crafts collided. The penguin jumped on Batman's back, flailing with an umbrella. Batman drew a weapon of his own, a small device with a red light on it. Then, the penguin saw his penguin army behind Batman. My babies! Angry and confused, the penguin snatched the device from Batman's grasp. He pressed the button, which opened the side panel of the Batsky boat. To his horror, hundreds of squeaky bats poured out of the Batsky boat surrounding him. Swatting blindly, 
The penguin crashed through the window and into the frozen moat. Batman looked down at the penguin. Then he saw Catwoman dragging Shrek towards the lair's whirring electric generator. Just then, the penguin's army launched its missile. Bombs whistled overhead, trailing smoke and fire. With a shattering boom, the old zoo burst into flames. When the building stopped shaking, Batman swung down to join Catwoman and Shrek. Shrek sniveled at Batman's feet. Let's make a deal. I'm the light of Gotham City. I can help you. Catwoman was sure a powerful man like Shrek would never have to pay for his crimes. The law doesn't apply to people like him. Or us. Wrong on both counts. We're the same. Split right down the center. I love you, Selena. I love you too, Bruce. It's just like a fairy tale. I could live with you in your castle forever. But I know I couldn't live with myself. Wait, Selena? Selena Kyle, you're fired. And Bruce Wayne, why are you dressed up as Batman? He is Batman, you moron. He was Batman, you mean. Then Shrek pulled out a gun and fired, wounding Batman. Heedless of the cat lives she was using up, Catwoman advanced on Shrek through whizzing bullets. You're the light of Gotham City. Then be the light of Gotham City. Catwoman embraced Shrek and plunged her steel talons into the electric generator. A spray of spark and electricity blinded Batman. When the smoke cleared, Shrek was dead and Selina had vanished. Catwoman was gone, but the penguin remained. Weakened by the heat, he stumbled through a rain of fiery rubble to the smoking generator. I must turn up the air conditioner. It's so snuffy in here. However, he couldn't get the generator to start up again. Then the dazed Birdman noticed Batman. He fired a truck umbrella, but the parasail just spun harmlessly round and round. Ah, I picked the wrong one. The penguin then sees his deadly umbrella in Batman's hand. You wouldn't blow away an endangered bird, would you? The penguin could hardly breathe now. He waddled toward the melting moat. I'll murder you momentarily. But first, a cool drink. The penguin reached his last chunk of ice, but his flippers fell short of their goal, and he collapsed in a heap, inches from the ice block. His body was solemnly borne away by the four emperor penguins that had raised him. The next day, carefree carolers once again sang in grand old Gotham. Alfred steered Bruce Wayne's Rolls Royce down a dark alley. Bruce Wayne was in the back seat. Hope stirred in his heart. Perhaps Selina was still alive. I didn't find her, Alfred. There was no body. Maybe. Yes, maybe. Come with me. Merry Christmas. Right. Peace on Earth. Goodwill toward men. Just then, a loud meow echoed from a nearby building. A shape darted off into the shadows. Was it just a cat? Or was it the woman he loved? Goodwill towards women.